All right, let's talk about cameras and how we can uh, move cameras around and animate them and all that. So in my scene here, I'm going to zoom out so you can see it. I'm going to delete this cube. I don't need that. Um, under my layers. All right, so I'm going to create or open up my base camera. Okay, so all my cameras are created through here. And typically, you can just use the camera um, there. Okay, we don't need to use any of the other fancy ones for what we're doing. Camera is perfect for what we're doing. Um, so you create a camera, and if I want to look through this camera, I find the camera. So this is, let's say, my um, which camera is this? My base cam, which is in dark green, which is around the camera. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go to uh, this button here, and that takes you into the camera. Whenever this is white, that's what you're viewing. So if I want to see that camera, obviously I clicked on it. I went to render cam. I clicked on that button, and it'll take you in and out of that view. Um, if I want to switch cameras, I can grab the other camera and click that, and it'll take me to, obviously, the different view. Uh, typically, when you work with a camera, you may want to lock it in, okay? So as I move the camera, let's say I get this thing lined up. I say, okay, that's where I want this to be locked in. Um, I can go to the camera, I can go to Tags, Cinema 4D, and I can say Protection. And if I open this up, I can make sure that all of these things are locked. And so now if I come here and try to rotate or move around or anything, I can't do it, right? So uh, it's a nice feature to have is that locking mechanism. Um, as you deal with cameras, some important features inside of them. Um, typically, the focal length is a, an important feature. Um, so as I take this focal length up to, let's say, 100, you can see how we get closer to our objects. And by getting closer to them, obviously, I may need to then back up so that I can see them in the view still. Now, something we need to pay attention to is where are we actually rendering? Like, what actually gets rendered? If I were to hit Shift-R, you'll see that this is a pretty rectangular frame, whereas this is a pretty uh, vertical frame. Okay, so this is landscape, this is portrait. Uh, it might be hard to see, but there's a dim line right about here and right about here. That's what's going to get rendered. So I'm, I'm going to go into my render settings at the top. I'm going to go to Output. And this is set to 1280 by 720. Now, it doesn't matter in, at this point what the actual resolution is as long as it's the same proportions. So if I set this to 960 by 540, the proportions are exactly the same as 1280 by 720. Okay. If this was something different, like let's say 600 by 720, well, now the proportions are way off. I, I can't use that. Okay. So as long as they're the same proportions, we're good. And you'll see it down here. The film aspect ratio should be 1.778 for everything you do. <clears throat> so as I line up my camera, as I take this render cam and line it up, that's what I'm kind of using as my base for where that is. Um, so focal length is going to control that zooming feature. If I set this to, let's say, 10, you'll see we have a huge range. And I really need to zoom in. And you'll get a, a lot of distortion and a lot of perspective on this. Okay. Again, you probably would never go this much because of just how distorted it is, but there might be some kind of effect uh, for a shot that you would need that would have that kind of thing. Okay. Typically, I go to like 80 or so, and that gives you a, a pretty, uh, decent, um, pretty decent focal length for your stuff. Okay. And you'll see there's presets in here too, so normal, portrait, telephoto, super telephoto. Um, <clears throat> The 35 millimeter equivalent is 80 millimeters. So this 80 is actually an 80 in real world terms. Um, focus object. If I wanted to have a, um, uh, sorry, not focus object. Uh, where'd it go? White balance. I said focus object, I was looking for white balance. Uh, as I render this, I'm getting this kind of look to it. Uh, but as I go to this render cam and I start to play with, let's say, whatever this is, uh, you'll see that I'm able to change kind of the lighting for the overall scene. So I may have it lit a certain way, but then I can come in here and play with what the white balance is uh, for a specific shot. Okay, so that's something that you may want to adjust. Uh, under physical, these are more advanced settings that uh, we'll get into uh, in a minute. Um, details, clipping planes are basically like if we didn't want something to render. Let's say we had something like a mile away we didn't want it to render, we can adjust what that clipping plane is. I'm going to crank this up a little bit. Uh, I really need to update. There we go. So you can see on the left how it's like cutting through our stuff. Um, 
So I may want to you know, not render something. So I'll go to Clipping Plane would come in. Uh, typically, you don't need to worry about these, but sometimes you do need to adjust what they, what they do. Stereoscopic is for um, stereo cameras. So if you had like left and right, you would adjust these. Um, composition, you could add things like um, grid. There we go. So now we can see the rule of thirds. If we want to add triangles to it too, or the golden spiral, you can add that as well. Okay, so lots of different options. And then you could even go inside here and control what each of those is going to do. Okay, um, all right. So that's the basics of that. <clears throat> now, uh, if I wanted uh, my camera to aim at something as it's moving. So right now, as I move my camera, uh, I spin around this thing like so, or I move it like that, and I always have to readjust what I'm looking at, okay? So that might be something that I want to add in there. Um, so I'm going to right click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, and I'm gonna add target. And you'll see this little bullseye come up, and basically it says, okay, what's your target object? So I can go into my geometry, uh, grab one of my objects, and just drag it right in there. And now as I move my camera around, you'll see how it's always looking at that one object, okay? I can't even like spin it away from it. It's like stuck to it. I can very quickly just grab a new object and drag it on there, and now it'll look at that one. Okay, so sometimes that'll be a helpful thing to have in there um, while you're animating or moving things around. Let's delete it because I don't want it, okay? Uh, typically when I'm working, I like to have a render camera that's locked. Okay, so as I'm doing my textures, lights, materials, all that stuff, I'll have a camera and I'll use that protection thing. Oops, that's target, not protection. Uh, protection, there we go. Um, yeah, protection, protection. Uh, and then I can't move it around. So that way when I hit Shift R, it's always gonna be in that same exact spot, uh, which is what I did in the other video, but somehow I Somehow I screwed it up. Let's delete all these other ones. Okay. So there's my basic camera. Now you have to understand what kind of camera you're going to be using for your stuff. Uh, some other features of this is different per camera settings. Like, you know, perspective is typically what we would use, but there's a lot of different options inside here, like parallel, uh, where this is basically going to, instead of having a perspective to it, it gets rid of all the perspective in your camera. Um, I have an actual camera that's set up to be a parallel camera, so let me turn off my base cam and turn on parallel cam. Okay, so now when we render this, we'll see that uh, we don't have that perspective on there anymore. It's all just like flat isometric type stuff. Okay, and again, it could be used for a cool effect. Um, or for something specific you're trying to get across. There's a lot of Cinema 4D renderings that do that kind of thing. Um, but again, it's just kind of like, what, what's the end goal? That's what you're kind of going for. Okay, uh, let me get out of this camera. And we'll turn off parallel. All right, okay. So in this case, let's say we're doing a, uh, an animated scene and I need to animate my camera kind of moving around. So what I've done is I've created a camera and I've used that target on there and I've set some keyframes. So I went to the beginning of my animation here. I'm gonna go to zero and I'm gonna set some keyframes here, set some keyframes there. I'm gonna go up to the end and I'm just going to uh, switch to my move tool mode there we go uh, and then I'm gonna move my camera over like so like so now with this locked feature sometimes it you know it limits you to what you are able to move around but it is what it is uh, I'll go back to my target cam lock those again and so now as my camera moves you can see how I've animated the camera going from one spot to another so typically when you animate a camera you want it to be nice and smooth uh, you don't want anything, you know, insanely uh, awkward. Uh, it is a bit close for my liking to the top of that. Um, sometimes when I'm doing a camera move like this, I may make just a null object. So it's just this like blank object in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I may use that as my target. So if I go to the target here, I drop the null in there instead. I have the ability to grab the null and move it. That way I'm not actually like moving an item. 
and because I have that all set up, you'll see how my camera doesn't uh, uh, need to be reanimated. It's just targeting a different object, okay? So very easily if I'm doing something like that, perfect, okay? Um, sometimes when you animate a camera, let's switch this off. Uh, animated cam, target, yeah, let's animate cam. All right, so here's another one that's animated. And this one has been animated uh, from one side to the other. Okay, just like this. Okay, and you'll see that we get this kind of like loop in here where it, it, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. It feels like it's kind of like a wobbly camera. And so sometimes you'll get these like weird things where it, that just, it happens, okay? And you just have to tweak your camera to get a nice flowing animation to it. Let's switch there. So you really want to look at the animation and see how it's flowing. Make sure that whatever you want centered is centered. It shouldn't be uh, off the screen at any point. You should have just a nice flowy camera, okay? Um, so that was set up the same way. It just doesn't have the um, other features that, that, one, that the other one did. All I've done is animating position and rotation at the start of this and then going to the very end and animating position and rotation at the end of that as well. So without using the target, okay? Now I also have another one that I've animated, which is this rotate cam. So let's go here. Let's turn off animated cam, turn on, oops, rotated cam. And we're gonna really see it in here uh, as it rotates around. Okay, so you'll see it's rotating perfectly around it. If I go into this and preview that side, you'll see our items stay perfectly centered in the scene and it just rotates around the items, uh, which is again, a nice feature. So it's just a different way to animate based off of that. Um, <clears throat> the way this one's done is I created a camera. Let's make a camera real quick. I'll look through it. Okay, uh, there's the camera. I'm gonna set it up. Let me turn off the other cameras so I don't get confused. There we go. So let's say that's my camera. Oops, make sure it's in the box. I'm gonna go to my attributes and adjust that focal length. I'll set that to 90 this time. There we go. Uh, and then I'm gonna take the camera and just Alt G to group it to itself. And what that does is it just puts it into a group. And if I hit L, I could then take the pivot and put the pivot right at the center. And now as I hit L again, now I can animate just the rotation of this thing going from side to side. Okay, now again, that might be something I need. If I have something I wanted to animate spinning around perfectly, um, that would be a, a case where I would want this to rotate perfectly. Uh, if this is off even a hair, let me move my pivot. And then rotate again. You'll see that that's gonna look kind of funky, okay? So we want to really make sure that as we animate things that our pivot's in the right spot. Now, what we don't want with animations of cameras. Oops, let me look through the camera. There we go. Uh, we don't want to spin around like a madman, okay? So if I come in here and I say, okay, I want this to be shown at the beginning. I'm going to rewind this. I'm going to go to position and rotation. I'm going to go, let's say, up to 50. I rotate my camera around again, set another keyframe, go up to 120, set another keyframe. Okay, if I hit play, you know, this is going to go kind of wonky. Uh, you'll see objects go in the frame, they go out of the frame. That's not what we want. We want our items to flow nicely from one spot to the next to the next. Okay, so bad camera go away all right so let me jump back to my render cam and i'll turn the render cam back on there it is all right so now let's look at some of the other options so under standard you really get very limited options as to what you can do um, and delete this object glow and i'm going to switch this to physical okay or physical here i'm going to turn global illumination off i don't want that on at the moment and I'm gonna go into the physical settings, which is for the physical camera, and I'm gonna turn on depth of field. And so inside of depth of field, um, or inside the physical settings, I can go here to the physical settings of the camera and I can turn on 
um, uh, the f-stop. So this works very much like a real camera. So if I set this to, let's say, 0.2, um, it's going to think that there's a 0.2 f-stop on here. Oops. Uh, make sure we're running. Let's see. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's set it down even lower. Let's say 0.05. There we go. Okay, so even lower, we're getting 0 0.05. All right, so now you can see like part of the cube is in focus here, but then the rest is really blurry. <clears throat> so let's close that. Um, now, under the object area, this is where we are able to pick a focus distance or a focus object or a focus distance. And this works very much like that target does. Um, if I were to click on this arrow and just say I want this in focus, it automatically reads the distance from the camera to that. If I wanted a specific object to always be in focus, focus, not focused. Um, I could just drag this object into that focus object area, and now whatever object is in there is always in focus. Now, it might be that my depth of field is very shallow, and I don't have a whole lot of uh, room for that, um, but that's all up to those settings under physical. So the lower this number is, 0.01, the more depth of field we're going to get, okay, or the shallower the depth of field, the more of that effect we're going to get. Okay, and obviously the longer it's going to take too. So you add in all those effects you may have with glass and reflections and brick and all that. Uh, drop that lighting in there, put the... Um, depth of field on there, add some motion to it. You know, your rendering could take a, a very long time to actually render out. So some of these things you really want to be careful with what you do. Um, to get that grain to go away, we could go in here and adjust our render settings, um, but we'll get to that uh, in another video. Uh, other things you can do, let's turn off depth of field. Let's turn that off so you can see it. Uh, so now none of these things affect that, so don't worry about that. Um, uh, lens distortion. So you could do stuff like this where I have this lens distortion. And I just cranked it up to 100 and 100. And what it's going to do is give us more of a fisheye. So instead of getting that you know, perspective that we had here, we're getting this like fisheye look to it. Okay. Again, something that, you know, it's important to kind of show you these things are there, uh, but you may not use them all the time. They're it's kind of very specific as to when you would use those things. Uh, there's also vignetting you could do here. I would just do the vignetting inside of uh, Photoshop or, or After Effects, okay? Um, all right, so as far as cameras go, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, there's not a whole lot that we need to worry about. Ideally, make a camera, make a nice smooth motion on there. Make sure your framing is good. Um, as you look at a still versus an animation versus what kind of animation you're trying to show off, um, all of those things will come into play. Uh, think of them as real-world cameras, not CG cameras, because CG cameras can do anything. They can do, like, barrel rolls, uh, and we wouldn't typically have a barrel rolling camera uh, in one of our CG scenes, even though, obviously, we could have that. 